I don't let him come to do something here when I'm not here. It's just not possible. But at least it is ready after three full weeks and 500 people working on it. In an earlier video, it became obvious that with the next sail, we would have lost the whole swim platform and that we needed to do something about it. So it's clear after we emptied out the back of the boat, the davits and the spoiler, the arch and all, it is clear that we need a new arch because there is not much to hang a boat on over here and also not to put some solar panels on. So we've already been thinking some time about a new arch. This should be on the back of the boat, on this, this part here. That should be on the place where the old spoiler was. And then there's some steps in between so we can climb up to, uh, to clean the panels and all. And then here is a double thing for some strength. Because this is where the davits come. It's strengthened with this one. There's gonna be a standing one up here behind this. And then maybe I should add something here for stability. Something there, something there. We'll see. became too expensive though because of the amount of materials we needed and the companies we tried didn't know how to read a technical drawing that was a problem they started with making a wooden mold and actually there it already went wrong the first band already wasn't equal this is the bench where they bend the stainless steel every diameter another wheel it's okay i think uh, this is the first support. Now they're gonna do another one. It's 33.7 millimeters. So they are leading the pipe so that when they bend it, the shape of the pipe will stay round. Action! There it goes. By the way, I am blurring the faces because they were such nice people. Again, a little step. It's kind of busy over here. They just put a big fishing ship in front of ours. A shrimp fishing ship. The first fitted plates. This is the plate with a hole for the, for the cables, for the solar panel and for the steaming light. And then this is the first setup. So they spot well with that on the plate. We hung it at level. Uh, another step. And they're now connecting the connectors, so to say and then spot weld it, take it back to the shop and then it's ready actually. The whole thing is a bit frustrating though because you constantly need to tell them this is not okay, you better do it like that. For example, it's a simple tool, right? 90 degrees. I'll spare you the whole rent but what I try to say is that nothing was 90 degrees, nothing was parallel and they tried to make it level while the boat wasn't level. I needed them to do many things all over again. You constantly need to keep an eye on it and that's very frustrating. I don't let them come to do something here when I'm not here. It's just not possible. They're nice guys and all and they really try their best but uh, it's frustrating. Shouldn't be necessary especially for the prices that they ask you. As you can see it is almost complete they needed to change some things because the solar panel didn't fit really 
and then we're going to try to fit it on the boat. This is for the for the lines of the dinghy. There will be some eyes over there and over there. Uh, so that will be the block for the dinghy. These are of course just uh, supports. So when it's on the boat, they. But at least it is ready after three full weeks and 500 people working on it. It looks good from here. If you don't know what has happened with it and don't know where to look, it looks quite good. They even couldn't clean up the kit. This is so unprofessional. It's way lighter than the old stuff. That thing combined with all this stainless steel nonsense. We made this beam stainless steel. It connects the holes and supports the swimming platform, which is way stronger than this strange thing that is not connected to the holes. It feels very sturdy now when you stand on the platform and dance a little. The thing has a little upward curve, so going from there. I really pressed it up with some wooden beams so that there's a lot of tension in the middle to keep everything straight. Nice. It's a little mess over here. Because I'm removing a lot of cables over here. These are all cables that were connected with the old spoiler arch thingy from the Garmin GPS antenna, from the SSB antenna, from Navtex antenna, uh, K2 cables from the solar panels, uh, steaming light, another light lamp thingy. Those holes are all gone. We close them up with epoxy. So I'm removing all those cables because those cables lead back here it goes up to this so i'm gonna lead them to through these cupboards and then over the tank to there and with them i mean only the cables for the steaming light and the cable for the solar panels it is far beyond 30 degrees celsius so i'm sweating like a pig but i'm not gonna die from that I need to think clearly now how many cables I'm gonna put through there, which cables, because I also want maybe a normal deck light kind of thing for the cockpit extra, maybe a, a big light to face backwards. So I need to think about doing some extra cables right away, otherwise I think I have a problem. The guys that made the new arch, they put a cable through the arch and it comes into the boat through the starboard side foot over there. As you can see, there have been made 500,000 modifications through the years. Added cables, which makes it quite a mess. cables just old antenna cable they ran under the floor towards the electronics those are at the starboard side the Garmin Navtex and the old SSB receiver we'll never use them anymore so away they go let's see this I gotta be careful because some of those I still need of course check which cable is what so I have one of the cables here and I'm gonna switch on the steaming light button to see if this is the steaming light yes 13 point something that's a steaming light so another day it's early in the morning six something and uh, Anya is already working in the front of the boat. She's uh, sending the, what was once the front shield. <laughs> and we need to, uh, to paint it again black. We use the same paint as the waterline. That's polyurethane, jet black. 
two components so that should be good last time we uh, made a little bit of mess of it because we had some left and it was ugly so we just smeared it on not good it was a shame to just throw it away but now we do it in a decent way okay uh, next thing uh, it's not next thing I was already doing the, the cables for the new arch wanted to do a, a lot of cables but decided just to do the cables for the solar panel then one cable for a, for a light for a dinghy and uh, just overall more light now luckily they put the line through it so I can pull all the cables through but again ugly fact they didn't file off the sharp edges of the hole it feels sharp so I need to file that off because otherwise the cables will be ruined this is cockpit light this is light here inside above the table I made an extra one and I'm going to use that for the light in the dinghy so that needs to go there to the fuses and then through this bulkhead to the back not sure yet what kind of fuse I'm going to use over here but it doesn't need to be a big one because it's going to be LED light and not a big LED light to get to the electric stuff I need to be in here. It's annoying, but it is what it is. It would have been better if I would have made a door, but for some reason I just didn't. This seemed the right thing to do, but there's several things I would have done different if I needed to do it all over again. But I'm not going to do it all over again because it was enough work as it was. And that is the mess that's behind it. There's still a lot of old cables behind this. These are the relays for the windlass, by the way, which is still not working. So I still need to remove some old cables, I think, but some cables, I don't even know where they're from. So I need to get some 12 volts from here. Now I need to find a plus cable, all those red cables that come from somewhere and I don't know exactly where because it's a long time ago that I worked on this. I think it's coming from behind here from the fuses. As you can see here I have a switch with 12 volt ring. Came in light so maybe I need to grab it from here. I checked here and there by switching the cabin light switch on and off and I found it over here. See 30.47 and it was obvious because this cable leads to this cabin light. So I'm gonna get some 12 volts from over here to a fuse over there to the switch and then back to the cable that's going to the arch. By the way even with 12 volts switch off the power before you start working on it. I mean 12 volt is not dangerous but if the cables touch each other you have a shortage. This is quite a mess. I found a better one, a bigger one because too many cables already for this little one now. By the way don't get nervous by using this. There will be a lot of people seeing this video who think you're crazy because uh, it's old-fashioned, it's dangerous. People used these things for decades and if you do it well and insulate it with tape it's old-fashioned yes. There are better solutions, yes, they don't have them here. So this is the solution for me now. And uh, I'm not afraid that something will go wrong. I'm going to feed a cable from here to that f little fuse panel that you saw uh, above the, the Victron in the, in the cabin. And I use a thicker one, so if I need more 12 volt from there, I can just connect it to this one. Otherwise I can keep pulling cables from here to there and it's already quite full with cables. That's the reason. I should have pulled this short piece of cable from the other side instead of <laughs> the other way around. Now I have to pull this through the same hole. The end result over here, nicely insulated no problem at all. I already have a main ground over here. Here's the thick ground cable. So I don't need to go back to that same spot. Again, no other choice than this. So this is what I'm going to use. Let's see if there's some space left over here. Yeah, I think so. Seems to be no problem. The 
other side of the fuse. Also a red cable because it's still a hot one. Split the cable up because I need them at two different places. One needs to go to this ground block and comes out here and the other one has to go uh, here and then up to the switch. As you see there's a lot of old cables, but it is from older instruments and they're okay. I'm pulling the cables now, it's kind of chaos and it must go in there behind the fuel tank then through a hole in the back of the cockpit and then directly into the arch up. So this is the cable that comes out of the arch. So I really need to fix this together so it won't slip off when, uh, when we pull it through. So I do every cable a little further so you get a kind of tapered unit which should make it easier to get it through the through the arch. So I will pull over there the other side of the cable is quite far but should work. So here is that locker so it comes from under here and then goes into this pipe Go over there you can see where it's coming out. Okay here it goes. Okay but will be Emma Okay there it goes. There's a lot of uh, resistance. So, fixed. That's ground, that's hot. And it's some tire wraps on the cable, so it looks good. First, I'm going to open up my Victron Connect app. CO2 smart solar regulators. There's the small one. There it is. See nothing. Then we go to settings, battery, and then you see charger enabled, not. It's disabled. We're going to switch that on. Charger enabled. Go back to the main screen and then we are going to switch on the fuse. You can see here that it's connected to the battery. There's a blue light blinking. And let's see what happens now. He reads 20.54 volts. This is from the solar panel. So there is a voltage, but no current yet. I guess it takes some time. Ah, there's some current coming. So 16, 17, 18 volt, it changes with the, with the sun and clouds. And a few amps from the panels, which it converts to 13.4 volts at this point, and 7.2 amps go to the batteries. The voltage is lower than it was because in the old situation we used two panels and they were in series. So I don't know how that works now, but it's given input, so that's good. Well, that was the reinstallation of the solar panel on the arch. That's done. The other cable is also there, the 12 volt cable for the light. Uh, don't have the light yet. That will just stay there until we have a, a right light for the arch to light the dinghy and the swim platform. Mm -hmm.